Okay, what I'm going to do for you today is do a, a comparison between Grenada and St. Kitts and Nevis. Uh, I get this a lot coming up on the differences between these two countries, but one reason I wanted to bring this up is this new change, which I just did a video on a uh, day, day and a half ago uh, with the E2 treaty that Grenada has. Turkey also has it too with the U.S. where someone can set up a business. In the USA, if you have citizenship in uh, Turkey or either Grenada, uh, that will now be curtailing uh, more than likely. There's a bill that's getting ready to be passed where it's going to make it uh, very difficult uh, for this to, to work anymore. Uh, you can stay tuned if it comes out where that changes, uh, I'll let you know. But I, I would advise you if you're getting citizenship in Turkey or Grenada and you're only doing it for the E2 treaty, just don't do it. You'll be wasting your, your money. Anyway, I want to do a comparison today on the two, um, Grenada and St. Kitts, and give you an idea of uh, the, the main differences, and then you can more or less go from there. Also, folks, if you want to legally get around your income taxes legally uh, or either get a second passport as quick as 45 days, do three things. Hit the subscribe button at the right of your screen right here, and you get new videos automatically as they come out. And I would like to hear from you. If you got a question or comment, just put it below. And also go to our website, www.citizenshipquickly.com, and just ask for some help. All right, now, Grenada uh, has visa-free or visa-free and rival access to 144 countries and territories that you can go to. St. Kitts has 162 countries. So you're looking at roughly um, about... Uh, 18 more countries that you've got with uh, St. Kitts than you do with Grenada. Uh, that's a lot of difference. And, you know, getting visas can be a pain in the butt and it can delay your trip or even screw up your flight uh, plans. So, you know, uh, my advice is I would be going with the country that has the most visa free travel, but that's not the only thing you got to look at. Uh, income taxes uh, in Grenada, they've got a local income taxes as high as 28%. They also have a requirement if you set up a local business of 9% Social Security tax. St. Kitts, again, uh, doesn't have an income tax. I've mentioned this on quite a few other videos. Um, also, Antigua doesn't have an income tax, but Antigua, if you set up a local business, they're going to hit you on, uh, uh, on the Social Security tax there if you're the owner. Now, St. Kitts does not require a Social Security tax on a, a local business for the owner. They do for the employees but they do not do for the owners. So if you're a one-man operation, you won't have to worry about uh, paying Social Security in, in St. Kitts for yourself. Now, Antigua and Barbuda require it on everybody, the, the person who owns the company and the employees. So if you're willing to go and, uh, and possibly uh, pay 28% on the income tax and 9% on Social Security tax um, in Grenada, you know, then take the passport, okay? Now, I have a lot of people that say, Tom, I'm not going to move to Grenada. I just want the passport. Well, a lot of people tell me this, and what happens is they end up moving to the country because they can't get the rights that normal citizens do picking a residency somewhere else, okay? And uh, Grenada does have a, a pretty good territorial tax system, but they don't exempt everything like St. Kitts does as far as for income goes. Um, also, if you live, if you end up moving to Grenada, Grenada is a pretty difficult, it's probably the most difficult country I've ever gone to uh, in the Caribbean. I, I had to, I think it was three trips I had to make to get there. It's very difficult. St. Kitts has got direct flights from a lot of places in the U.S. and also Canada. So, you know, it's a lot easier to, to get to the place. Uh, St. Kitts also has a lot higher income uh, people, which makes it a lot better if you have a local business. Uh, St. Kitts, you can pull this up on the internet, uh, has more billionaires per capita than any country in the world, uh, except for Monaco. This came out in Forbes. Uh, now, uh, so, you know, direct flights can save a lot of time and hassle. Um, St. Kitts does not have an E2 treaty with the U.S. Uh, Grenada does now, but like I said, with the new bill that's going to be passed, more than likely it's going to go through, it's going to affect the E2 treaty with Grenada. Uh, I don't have time to go through that Today, you can look at the other video I had giving the specifics on that, but it will wreak havoc on the E2 Treaty with Grenada. Now, as I've mentioned to you before, I've, I've, I've said this many, many times, that when you're looking for second passports, get a, a citizenship program that you can get as long as you got no civil or criminal uh, uh, problems in the past. Uh, a lot of residency uh, by investment um, Countries uh, don't go by the statutory requirements after the minimum residency requirements have been made. 
thereby messing up your plans for a passport in a reasonable amount of time. I see this, folks, all the time. Uh, and that's one thing I do like about St. Kitts is uh, it's fast track. Now, you know, we're talking about fast track programs when we talk about Antigua, uh, St. Kitts, Grenada. But, you know, a lot of people do pick these um, residency by investment programs. I can tell you a lot of times it's a nightmare. It takes forever to get the passport if you, if you can ever get it. Uh, but I would make sure that the country that you're applying for has no military requirements. I mentioned this before to get the passport. Uh, that's a nightmare if you got to go through the military. And, and some countries might let you buy, but then they make your kids go. You know, and this can really affect your, your whole life because your kids could get injured and, and the injury alone would not be worth going through the hassle and headaches of getting a, a passport. Uh, also make sure that the tax system that's in place for that country is either territorial or pure tax saving status um, that does not tax worldwide income if you live there. And this is the main thing that you want to look at. Uh, and a lot of countries don't have that. Uh, Turkey doesn't have it. Uh, see, so many people get Turkey and they end up getting the passport, moving there. And they go, damn nations, I could have gotten a, a country that I could have moved to and they pay no income tax. People just don't think about stuff like this when they do it. Uh, also make sure that there is a language requirement that uh, if there is a language requirement that you're already fluent in that language uh, before you apply for the passport or don't apply. You know, one thing that I do like about these fast track programs, they're all English speaking. And there is no there's no requirement. You got to pass even an English test. You just pay the money for the investment the property or donation, whatever it is. And you got the passport and always verify that dual citizenship is allowed or don't get the passport. OK, uh, I've seen so many problems with people that depend on one country for their passport. Uh, if you get in trouble with that country where you got your passport, they can cancel your passport. They can choose not to renew it. And then you're stranded. Even if you're in a different country, you can't move. And you also you can't renew that residency of that other country because that other country is going to require a valid passport when you renew it. So it screws everything. It, it just puts you in a dead situation. Always have two passports. And you, your second passport, both passports should be countries that don't tax worldwide income to its citizens like the U.S. has got, okay? Uh, so these are things that you want to look for. And uh, you want to get a passport that has as many visa-free countries as you can go to. As I mentioned to you before, St. Kitts has more visa-free travel than any of the countries in the Caribbean at 162 countries. This is important that you look at this. Visas take a lot of time to get sometimes. It's a hassle. It's a pain in the butt. Uh, also, you want to get in a passport that has as... Um, uh, as uh, that are not only visa-free countries that you can go to, but are good quality countries that you can go to. This is a, another thing you want to look at. Uh, in other words, you should have visa-free to the Shenzhen countries at least. Uh, and also remember that a lot of countries reserve uh, their most lucrative opportunities or business opportunities to people that are citizens, uh, like real estate, insurance, retail, and other business opportunities like this. Uh, and if, it can take you years to get that passport. So, if you're wanting to get in one of these locked out businesses and you're not a citizen, then, you know, you've wasted all your time. You enter an international flight, going there, setting up a, a business or whatever, trying to get that done. These are things that you need to look at before you start making international moves. I see so many people that uh, um, that they just don't they don't think about stuff like this. Also, when you move to a new country uh, where you don't know the language, it's going to take you a lot longer to get everything done. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. That, that was the biggest headaches that I had to deal with is when you call any government department, especially government departments, because you have people that can't speak English good there or English at all. So you got to wait on the phone for them to get somebody in that speaks English. And most people don't think about this. They, they just think, well, you know, I'll just hibernate around English speaking people. You can't do that. OK, because when you pick the phone up and you call government offices other offices, they don't want to speak English. They want to speak their native language, okay? They don't want to have to put up with, with the crap of trying to uh, deal with you, okay, because you don't know their language. So now what happens is you're on the phone sometimes waiting four times longer to get somebody on the phone because they got to find someone who's free that speaks English. These are things that people don't think about that just ends up being a pain in the butt. 
And I, of course, I've told people about I almost died one time in Dominican Republic because the pharmacist gave me the wrong medication because he didn't understand w- what I was saying. I had constipation. He thought I had diarrhea. He gave me the opposite medication. I almost died. These are the types of crap that you run, run into that people don't think about when you get a second residency, a second passport. Uh, you th- you think you can just get by and you can skip things. I'm telling you, these are the things you need to go by. Folks, if you want to learn more on this, again, go to our website, www.citizenshipquickly.com and ask for some help. And I would like to hear from you. If you got a question or comment, put it below. And again, if you want to subscribe and get new videos automatically, hit the subscribe button right on your screen right here and you'll get videos as they come out each day. And I look forward to talking to you in the next video. Take care.